welcome back to my next playthrough series. Yes, we're back to Castle Ravenloft. This time it's Adventure 5, and it's called The Final Transformation. And the gist of this is we are trying to get this human, uh, who is uh, starting to turn into a vampire, thanks to Strahd, uh, to a dark fountain somewhere in Castle Ravenloft's dungeon area, tombs, and... Um, have him drink the waters there and he will be transformed back to a regular human again. Of course there's a couple snags in this adventure and that if at any time uh, our human here is uh, in a space or in a tile with a monster he's going to turn into a young vampire and attack us but then any time he is in a space or in a tile with a human character uh, which will be Alyssa, our ranger, or Thorgrim, our dwarf cleric, he will transform back to a human. And the way to win this scenario is we must have him transform back to a human. If we kill him when he's in vampire form, we will lose the scenario. And of course, if any one of our two heroes uh, goes to zero health and we do not have a healing surge to bring them back, we start with two. Yep, we're going to lose the game. So, very quickly, that's a, the rundown of it. Uh, it's called the Final Transformation. So we have to get him to this dark pool, have him transformed back. All right, once again, we're going to take a look at Alyssa, our ranger. Then we're going to look at Thorgrim, our dwarf cleric. And then we are going to read the introduction to the scenario. And then we're going to begin. All right, so here's a overview of uh, Alyssa, our human ranger. And of course, we know from previous playthroughs, uh, we've, I've used her every time. She's the master of bow and blade with keen senses and dungeon skills. You're determined to stop the evil of Castle Ravenloft. She's got an armor class of 15, hit points of 8, which I'm using an 8-sided die. Speed of 6, surge value of 4, which means if she goes to 0 hit points, needs to be uh, using a, a healing surge, she'll get 4 hit points back. She's a scout, she's a master explorer. During your exploration phase, you can explore one unexplored edge on your tile, even if you aren't adjacent to it. So that's pretty cool. She starts with one ranger utility, two at wills, and one daily ranger. And of course, she starts with a treasure item. And so we're going to go through those right now. Uh, if this will focus nicely. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to zoom out so that I can bring this to the camera and I don't have focusing issues. Okay, I've zoomed out, and of course, I'm using the colored D&D &D miniature for Alyssa. The game comes with solid blue ones. This is, of course, much nicer. So we'll be using that. And now let's take a look at her cards. So her uh, at will, she gets two at wills, uh, hit and run. You quickly strike and then retreat to safe ground. She can attack one adjacent monster, hit or miss. You can place your hero in any square of your tile. It's plus six to hit, doing two damage becomes very important because I've added in the dungeon command on dead monsters and some of them are really really tough. Her second at will power, careful attack, we've seen this many times, I use it all the time. <laughs> you study your enemy looking for a gap in its defenses, only when you find it do you strike. One adjacent monster takes a damage, that's it, no roll, nothing, just boom, one damage. Sure, for her utility power, of which she gets one, gonna have unbalancing pair. You block an attack and slide your enemy away from you. Use this power and an adjacent monster hits you. The attack misses instead. So we're gonna take no damage. Place that monster in a tile within one tile of you. But then we flip this card over after use, which means we're only gonna be able to use it once during this scenario unless we get something that lets us flip over utility and or daily powers. And her daily power ranger is split the tree. You fire two arrows at once. We strike two different monsters. Choose a tile within two tiles if you attack two monsters on a tile. If you miss and the monster is more than a tile away from you, place it one tile closer. So you annoy it and it comes at you. Uh, it's an attack plus six. If you hit, you do two damage. Even if you miss, you do one. So it's a pretty powerful card. Again, you flip it over when you've used it. And she starts off the item, uh, Potion of Healing. You use this during your hero phase. You or an adjacent hero regains two hit points. All right, and that is it for Alyssa. And I should also mention uh, that our human here, uh, he's got a name, <laughs> it's Cavan. And Cavan will not be targeted by monsters. He can't take damage unless he's in vampire form. So monsters and traps ignore him uh, because basically he is almost a vampire. So he is one with the evil denizens of the Castle Ravenloft. So that's how that works. 
All right, let's take a closer look now at Thorgrim, and then I think we're going to take a first turn for uh, this adventure. Ah, uh, right in here we have Thorgrim, of course, another colored miniature from the D&D miniatures uh, lineup, uh, which is uh, much nicer than the solid blue, so I'll put that back on the board where it was. All right, Thorgrim, Dwarf Cleric, you're the champion of the Dwarven gods sent to eradicate the evil deep inside Castle Ravenloft. Uh, okay, so it makes sense. Uh, he is trying to help out our fellow clerics by taking the human down and having him transform back to human and not end up as a vampire. Armor class 16, a little bit higher than Alyssa, 8 hit points, 5 speed, a little slower, surge value 4. He has aid, you know, healing techniques. At the end of your hero phase, if you did not attack, one other hero on your tile regains 1 hit point. So that's pretty good. And powers, you can use the following. He can use one utility, two at wills, one daily, same as Alyssa. So I'm going to back camera out, and we're going to take a look at those and his starting item. All right, camera's backed out, and now we can take a look. So his at will power, he has the Lance of Faith. You sear your foe with a brilliant ray of golden radiance. Attack one monster within one tile of you. The monster is undead. You deal plus one damage. Gee, I wonder if that will come in handy during this playthrough. <laughs> I think so. Plus six. One damage, two if it's undead, which is probably going to be quite a few times. Uh, his second at will power healing strike. You smite your foe and heal a nearby companion. Attack one adjacent monster. If you hit, choose one hero with one, within one tile of you. That hero regains one hit point. Pretty cool uh, for healing. And his utility power, of which he has one. Shield of Faith. Divine energy protects you and your companions. Use when you're in a hero on a tile. Use when you or a hero on your tile is hit by an attack. The attack misses instead. I like these kind of cards. You and each hero within one tile, you gain a plus two bonus to armor class until the end of your next hero phase. It's pretty cool, but you have to flip it over, of course. You can only use it once for adventure. And he has the, another, his daily power that he gets one of, Beacon of Hope. You blast your foes with Radiance of Light. Your allies are heartened by the attack. Choose a tile within one tile of you. Attack each monster on that tile. Each hero on the chosen tile regains one hit point. Okay, that's pretty cool. Plus six and doing two damage, again, be pretty important because there's some pretty, pretty tough monsters from the Dungeon Command deck anyway. And uh, yes, those uh, flaming skeleton fireball tossing jerks <laughs> which i hate uh usually pop up at the worst possible time of course we flip this over as well he starts off not surprisingly with holy water use this item during your hero phase instead of attacking so instead of attacking choose an undead monster within one tile of you it takes one damage uh so i this is not an attack so use this item during your hero phase instead of attacking so it's using an item so that should be able to couple with his aid ability you know healing te techniques at the end of your hero phase if you did not attack or does that card does it say attack choose uh, it just takes a damage no this is just using an item don't think that's an attack so that should uh says if you did not attack another hero one other hero on your uh, tile regains a hit point. I think we can combo that. That's how I'm ruling it. He's just chucking some holy water. He's not actually using an action to take an attack. That's how I'm going to do it. All right, we are uh, very quickly. I will just show you this. I'm not going to go through it. You can read it if you like. Uh, it's uh, it's how a turn works. We have the hero phase, exploration phase, villain phase, and so that was the hero on there. This is the exploration phase, the villain phase. So how we determine. Uh, if uh, Cavan here turns into a vampire is at the start, the very start, the very first thing you do on the villain phase is we check to see if he's on a tile with a monster. If he is, turns into a vampire. If he's uh, on, or sorry, if he's on a tile with a monster, he turns into a vampire. Also, if there's no hero on Cavan's tile, so if he's over here by himself on this tile, he will also turn into a monster. So we have to be uh, on the same tile as him and uh, we have to have no monsters on that tile for him to not change into a vampire at the start of the villain phase. Okay, I'm going to zoom back down here a little bit and we're going to read the introduction and then I think we're going to have uh, each of them maybe take a turn or maybe we'll just have one take a turn. It just depends on the timing here. Oh, we're doing a bit of an overhead view here. 
says, when you start this adventure, you read this. The cleric of Barovia has entrusted you with Cavan, a young villager, who has been bitten by the vampire lord Count Strahd. To save this young man, the cleric explains, you must enter the castle and find the dark fountain. The water in that fountain can reverse the vampiric curse flowing through Cavan's veins. But make sure that one of you always stays with Cavan, and be careful not to let any of Strahd's monsters get too close to him. He is close to succumbing to the vamp vampiric curse and the evil of the castle could cause him to lose himself. Be careful. All right, and with that, we're going to begin. We're going to begin with Alyssa. And so what can we do on a hero uh, phase? Well, we can move and attack, attack and move, or we can move twice. Well, no monsters. Uh, she can move up to six spaces, but she's just going to move one space to here and be adjacent to this edge and that's basically the end of the hero phase now it is the exploration phase and what do we do with the exploration phase i have uh, shuffled the tiles in a specific manner uh, so that the dark fountain will show up between tile 9 and 13. so this will not be the dark fountain but it will be arr, a black triangle we're off to a horrific start all right well we find a little corridor here the black triangle Next thing we have to do, of course, is find out what monster spawns. So that's the next part of the exploration phase. And the monster we're going to get, that's an encounter. What am I doing? Wrong deck. <laughs> let's try Let's try the top of the monster deck. We're going to get, and we get a ghoul. Okay, one hit point. Uh, yeah. And the ghoul is associated with Alyssa because it is her turn. Okay, so we're going to get a ghoul out here. I have organized the mini so the ghoul shows up and of course he's chomping on a leg bone or something and he is right there uh, and now we get to the villain phase so here we are the start of the villain phase is cabin on a tile with a monster no he is not he's on a tile with two of our heroes is he on a tile all by himself no he's not so he's not going to transform that is all good and of course, the next thing we do in the villain phase, uh, if you didn't explore a tile, but if you explored a tile with a black triangle, you draw an encounter card. Oh, hate these things. All right, I guess we are going to be looking at this encounter card that I pull out first, and it is Leaf Lip Siege. And it's an event. A gnarled old man dressed as a clerk steps from the shadows. I watch the master's treasure. At least I do, unless I'm distracted. Okay. You try to distract a leaf, roll a die. One to ten, you scare a leaf and it calls for help. Place a new monster on the active hero's tile. Whoa! Eleven to twenty, draw a treasure card. Oh man, here we go with the uh, needing somewhat. Well, we're going to use the dice tower. Why not? I'll throw it right here. And we're going to take a 20 sided die. And we're really, really hoping for an 11 to 20. Come on! And we get a 14. Oh yeah. 14 is higher than 11. So, hey, this worked out really, really well. Wow. Starting off well. Okay, that's uh, that's our encounter finished with. I like that. We get a treasure card. Excellent. And eagle eyes. It's a fortune. Play this fortune immediately. Place one tile from the top of the dungeon tile stack adjacent to any unexplored edge. Place any new monsters on that tile as normal, but do not draw an encounter card. Ooh, let's hope for a black triangle. So, makes sense for our ranger to have eagle eyes. Um, yeah. So we're getting through the dungeon quicker, so we can place this on any unexplored edge. I'm going to have to zoom out, because we're going to want to see where this is placed. So I'm going to be coming right back here in a second with a zoomed out view. Alright, this is a pretty zoomed out view, but I think I want to put this tile up here. Let's get it as far away as possible because we have to put a monster on it and wow well, darn it it's a white triangle which means we didn't dodge an encounter because white triangle tiles don't cause an encounter but yeah we're gonna get a monster oh <laughs> so Alyssa starts off with two monsters oh man no I hate okay anyway a wraith oh it's undead okay that's good for Thorgrim he might be able to smack it down uh, let's find the wraith. We're going to look at its details here in a bit. Uh, we're not going to look at it right now. So the wraith is these blue plastic translucent horrors, and it shows up there. Oh, man. Okay, continuing on with the villain phase, 
Uh, if the villain is in play, activate it. Now, he would be a villain as the young vampire, but he didn't change, so not happening. But activate each monster and trap you control in turn in the order you drew them. So we're going to have to start off with the ghoul. Ah, uh, yeah, this is not good. So what does the ghoul do? If the ghoul is adjacent to a hero, it's not. If the ghoul is within one tile, it is. Uh, it moves adjacent to the closest hero and attacks with a paralyzing claw. So it's going to move... I'm going to leave it on this tile. I don't want it to be on the tile with our uh, cabin. Uh, a claw at plus 7 it does 1 damage if it hits. And our hero then will be immobilized. Damn it. Alright, well, we're going to get out the dice tray again. I know we're shooting from a long distance here. Let's see what the ghoul rolls. Nice and low. And it rolls a natural 20. Oh! Jeez. <laughs> Alright. Oh, that's 3 damage. Oh, man. Well, this is from 8 health down to 5. Wow. And she gets the lovely immobilized condition. You cannot move. Discard this condition at the end of your hero phase. So I like to do it like this, putting these conditions actually underneath uh, our characters so that I remember they have a condition. Oh man. And we're not done there yet because up next is going to be the Wraith. The Wraith says, the Wraith is within one tile. One, two, it's within two. Okay, we don't do it. Otherwise, the Wraith moves one tile towards the closest hero. And that's it. So it is just going to move one tile closer and it will move to the bone pile. Uh, uh, yeah, that's what it does. It moves to the bone pile. I've been doing things incorrectly sometimes and just say it moves here. No, it doesn't. It moves to the bone pile. There it is. And that's it. That is it for Alyssa's turn. Down five hit points already and immobilized. Ouch. Up next, Thorgrim. And, uh, yeah. Let's have Thorgrim take his turn. Now, how this, how the human cabin moves is he moves with a hero who, that he is adjacent to. So he's probably going to be moving with Thorgrim. All right. I'm going to zoom down. We're going to take Thorgrim's turn. All right, it's time for the Lance of Faith. <laughs> because the Wraith here has two hit points, but Thorgrim has this at will ability. So we're on to the, we're basically doing the hero turn. And we're doing Thorgrim's turn. Um, and he is going to do an attack, then a move. So he's going to attack one monster within one tile. Uh, if the monster is undead, which I do believe, we look at the Wraith, undead, this is good, it is good stuff, uh, you deal plus one damage with this attack. So it'll do two damage plus six to hit for Lance of Faith, uh, and we need a 15 as the armor class. So we're going to have to have Thorgrim roll a nine or higher. Oh man, come on, a nine or higher? A nine! <laughs> okay, hey, that is good enough. Nine and six is 15, which is the armor class of the Wraith. The Wraith takes two damage because it's undead, and that was the Lance of Faith. Boom! The Wraith goes back in the box, and the Wraith is going to go to our um, experience pool. And that's three experience, so that is pretty awesome. So that's good, and if we can use five experience to bounce an encounter. If we remember that rule, good stuff, Thorgrim. So Thorgrim takes out the Wraith, which means, let's not forget, a treasure card. Don't want to forget the all-important treasure card. Get the treasure card, Breath of Life. Play this fortune immediately. Your hero regains one hit point. Uh, and we can give treasure cards to anybody. I'm pretty sure. So we're going to give this. This is going to happen for Elissa. So she gets a Breath of Life after Thorgrim does this. Uh, that's how I'm going to play it. Because I'm pretty sure treasure cards, you just get one and it applies to either hero. So, we're going to have Elissa then heal one hit point. She's going to go from five hit points back to six. So that was a pretty good uh, treasure card to get. Alright, I like it. It's all good so far. Alright, now Thorgrim's going to move. Thorgrim has a movement of five. And I think he's going to move one two here and he's going to take um cavern with him so adjacent you can pull him along with him 
Uh, now he's adjacent to both, so that may come in handy. I'm going to move this here because now it is exploration phase, and we're going to be pulling a tile for Thorgrim because he is adjacent to an unexplored edge. Oh man, what do we get? White triangle. Yeah, so we're just going to get a monster. Uh, yeah, I got to try and fit everything in here without destroying our setup here. All right, so white tile, no encounter. Yes, but we do get a monster. Ooh, and what monster is Thorgrim going to have to control? A zombie. Okay, that's that's not terrible. So we get a zombie for Thorgrim, which is going to show up on the bone pile. Now it is the villain phase, and uh, very start of villain phase is um, Cavan on a space with no hero. No, he's on the space with uh, Thorgrim. Is there a monster on his tile? No, he's not going to transform. All good. But uh, we didn't draw a black triangle, so we're not going to get a, an encounter card. The villain's active. He's not a young vampire. Not active. Uh, now we have to activate each monster. So Thorgrim only controls the zombie. The zombie will activate. Let's take a look and see what the zombie is going to try to do. If the zombie is within one tile, well, it is. Uh, it moves adjacent to the closest hero and attacks a hero with a rotting fist. So we're going to put him here. He's going to attack Thorgrim with a rotting fist, plus five. Uh, one for each monster on the tile, monster's tile. So it's only going to do one damage. If it hits Thorgrim, it's going to be rolling and it gets plus five. Thorgrim's armor class is 16, so the monster has to roll an 11. And it rolls a 16. Damn it! <laughs> All right, rolls a 16, which means Thorgrim does indeed take a damage. He's going to go from eight health down to seven. Okay, uh, all is good, I think, so far. And that's going to be end of Thorgrim's turn. And that's going to be the end of our episode for today. So I'm just going to readjust the camera a bit here and wrap up our intro and episode one. All right, so I brought the camera down lower so we can kind of see what's going on here. So we have Alyssa immobilized. No! For her next turn, you have the ghoul trying to chomp on her. We have Thorgrim uh, and Cavan uh, making their way here. We had one encounter, which wasn't too bad. It actually gave us a treasure. We got another treasure because we took out the Wraith. But we have a zombie here in Thorgrim's face, which I don't think is too big a deal at the moment. So far, uh, we're both alive. So Thorgrim's at 7 health, Alyssa's at 6, and uh, we're just beginning our playthrough of the final transformation so once again we have to get cavin to the dark pool and uh, it, the dark pool has five health on it so we have to spend five turns at the dark pool to have cavin uh, be undone from turning to a vampire and then we'll win the scenario so thanks so much for watching along thanks for your comments subscriptions likes i do hope the color is better now so i'm using uh, adobe premiere elements instead of the abomination which was movie maker 10 so thanks so much for watching along and we'll see you in the next episode